Hello, YouTube. It is very late. I was supposed to record this two, three hours ago, but I set everything up and then I realized my battery was dead. So as I was charging it, I was playing some Final Fantasy X. And so here we are now. This video I've been wanting to do for a while, following a makeup tutorial by Miyawaki Sakura, former member of Eyes One. I was obsessed with Eyes One. But as we know, Eyes One is no more and she's in hype now. So uh, she's living her best life. Correct me if I'm wrong, but do Japanese idols like in AKB48 and what was the one that she was in SKE? Do they do their own makeup for concerts? Because I think she was like, oh, I did my own makeup. I was like, but honestly, promoting in Korea for a while, and then going back to Japan, you know the makeup styles are completely different. And so she's coming up in here with her pink hair, flashy pink makeup, glitter, everything, her tints. And then all her little sisters are kind of just like, kind of basically. <laughs> As with many of my other videos, this is actually what I filmed before, but I hated the way it turned out because I basically followed her tutorial exactly, technique and everything that she was doing, but I felt like it looked weird. I mean, it's gonna look weird on my face no matter what, but it just didn't look at good on my face. So what I think I'm gonna do is using the same products, I'm gonna apply the tutorial to suit my face or kind of just basically I'm just using the same products, but just applying it the way I would normally, which I think honestly is how I think most people go about makeup tutorials because we obviously all don't look the same and so if we're following our favorite beauty youtuber but they don't look like us we kind of have to adjust it to our face right i tried to gather as many similar products as i could that she did that she used many of which i already had and some i just picked up and also brushes as well because i happen to have a lot of the brushes she's using and if there's anything that i change i'll give you a reason why <laughs> ah pff. hkt 48 <laughs> And it was a graduation concert. Love that for her. Yep. Oh my God. I got it. Can I just say, I love how this entire video was filmed completely out of focus. <laughs> Sakura is being relatable. Okay, let's start with the makeup bag. I actually have the exact same makeup bag, but to be honest, these are widely available on Amazon and they're kind of like no brand. So lots of people sell these, but if you uh, tend to carry your makeup around different places, these are perfect. It actually comes with more like dividers and stuff so you can customize the sections, but um, you get an area up here for like liners and brushes. And I think it's just the perfect size for traveling and they're not that expensive. So oh, for the base, she used two primers and I'm just gonna say she used a pore primer from Corsell's, which I don't have because it's sold out probably because of this video. And the other one was a, not really a primer, but more of a, a tone up cream. This one from Chong Samur, Skin Setting Tone Up Sun Base. What I did when I first recorded this was use a different pore primer that I had plus that, but my skin was just so damn dry. I hated the way my skin looked the entire time. So I will use the Chong Samur Tone Up Base, but I'm gonna skip the pore primer. If I use two primers at once, honey, I don't even like to use primer to begin with. But just for simple skincare prep, I'm gonna use the Estra Hydration toner. I recently went to the dermatologist, a new place, a clinic, to get some stuff done to my skin. Something for my redness, and then one thing for some, they call it like skin Botox, but it's mostly for like, what is it? Allowing the skin to keep hydration, because my skin, I'm getting old, y'all. My skin just doesn't retain moisture anymore. And instead of using pore primer, I'm gonna use my CLO Cream Dream Skin Fluid, which you can now follow the Instagram, the official Instagram, which we opened. Uh, so you can follow that for updates and stuff about when it's going to come out and all that. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of like events and like very Korean style, like event to Katungo. I'm going to release more information about this, like official stuff in the next week or so. So look out for that. The next few months are going to be real fucking busy because we've been discussing the next few products already. So our girl Sakura, she applied the tone up cream with just, she dotted it, I think, and then she like used her puff. I'm going to apply it the way I would. <clears throat> I want to go wet my sponge and also put lens, some lens in. This is the uh, tone up base. And compared to other tone up bases, this is actually not, it's actually more moisturizing. I still find that my skin tends to soak that shit up and make it look really dry. And the thing is, Surprising. I feel like she's putting quite a lot of make like skin makeup on, uh, which I guess is okay if you're gonna be on stage because the lights are gonna blur out a lot of your face anyway. Uh, I just feel like it's a lot. And she does use a sponge, so I guess it soaks up some of the product, but um, I'm gonna show you kind of what I do to make sure it's like thin and doesn't look like too heavy. She's gonna be using a lot of uh, brushes from this Oki line. 
Uh, Oki, this brush line is by this makeup artist, uh, really famous in Korea. She does a lot of uh, idols and a lot of um, actresses, but I think she's most well known for being Taeyeon's makeup artist. Uh, she has a YouTube channel, so you can go watch her content, but this brush line is from her. So I'm using this brush. Super yarpke, like almost nothing. Using a latex puff. I haven't tried the Corsell's primer that she used, so I can't tell what kind of texture it is. But if it's a pore primer, I'm assuming it's like, I mean, not these days a lot of pore primers don't have silicone in them, but pore primer plus a chokchokan moisturizing tone up cream, I was a little surprised. I'm kind of just putting it in the areas that I need, feel like would need to be brightened up, like the shadowy parts of my face. So again, we're gonna be covering everything with the foundation she uses, so it doesn't really need to be everywhere. Oh, okay. So for foundation, she's using Javerni Milchak Cover Foundation and then this Espar Pro Taylor Foundation, the Big Glow line. She says the Javerni one is thick, but personally, I feel like the Espar one is a slightly more thick. They're both rather thin foundations, but the Javerni one isn't as thick because it's one of those like thin kind of really fast drying foundations and it adheres really well to the skin. That's where the name comes from. Milchak is that, again, like I've said before, like adherence and she mixes the two and the specific brush that she uses is this one from that Oki line and I have a love-hate relationship with these brushes. They're really good at helping your foundation to fill in the pores and give you that really smooth look and these are great with matte foundations but they can very easily dry your skin out and like pull up dead skin and you can get very carried away with using too much foundation so I'll show you how I would apply it. I guess I can see why they would she would mix the two because the Mewtech one might dry her skin out too much. You're gonna be using these sorts of brushes. What you're gonna actually do is you're gonna pull it downwards and thin it out like this. So you get this like this thin, like flat thing. So if it's on your hand, you're like slowly pull it, pulling it downwards because these almost act like sponges. And if you just put like, if you just pump your foundation out and you just like dip, it soaks it up just like a sponge would and you're basically wasting foundation. And also a lot of these are kind of rounded, especially this one is rounded. So it kind of like just goes into like one little, like little spot. And so when you're blending, it doesn't apply evenly. Kind of pick it up like this. And this way you're only get, getting the tiniest amount on here. And it's just the very tips of the bristles so that when you apply it, it applies evenly. When you're looking straight ahead from the chin, to your upper part of your cheek, this V shape. I apply it downwards. And then towards the center. Swiping slash like this, dabbing. You get a really thin layer, but the coverage is actually really good. And it helps conceal the pores. I feel so grossed out when I see people that use these like buffing brushes or like those flat top kabuki brushes and every time they put on it they'll dot their foundation on the face and then they kind of just like do this every day and so it builds up on the brush and it just gets so gunky and like gross looking and especially if you don't clean it often it really builds so much product on the brush that it makes it harder to blend because you're putting so little on the brush, by the time you're done blending, most of the foundation would have been removed. Like you see right here, like there's not much left. Most of it went on my face. If you kind of just dip into a puddle of foundation, most of that will be in the brush. And do you see, we still didn't use all the foundation. So. And then she uses this Luna concealer, which actually, ever since I tried to record this the first time, that was the first time I used it. But ever since that video, I've been really into it. So um, this Luna long lasting concealer, is great. It's really thick. And so when you apply it thin, it gives you really great, it's not watery. Like, you know those concealers that when you're blending, it like turns all watery and like medium coverage. Most people would kind of just like take the wand and just, and for her, she kind of just dotted it on, but I'm going to apply it in a more wide area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this kind of flap again from Oki, that Oki line. You can use paint brushes for this because they're really thin or really flat. 
but I'm gonna take it on here and really soak up the brush so that when you apply it, it goes on smooth and without any streaks. If you just put a little bit on the brush, it kind of, that's where it causes streaks. You see how it applies? Thin, but also evenly. And again, when you're applying it thinly and you go to blend with your, your puff, because you put a thin layer, the puff isn't going to absorb very much product. It's kind of like when you do these dotting motions and when you like gunk on the concealer and you're like you're using the puff to take off the excess. One, you're wasting product and two, you're kind of putting too much to begin with. Can you see the slight difference that it makes? It really helped clean it up. Even though it's like 1, 2 a.m. right now, I had a Starbucks just that I have a little bit more energy for this video, but right now it's not working or I guess it hasn't kicked in. My skin is looking so good. Oof. So our girl Sakura, she uses a Dior powder, but um, she said for a stage performance for longer, okay. So it's been a long time since I used this Innisfree No Seba Mineral Powder. And when I went to go buy it, they actually renewed the packaging. This shit has been in the game for so long, but I'm surprised she set her face with this because to me, don't get me wrong, I used to use this shit all the time back then, but it's a very thin kind of like HD kind of like sort of powder, you know, this kind, which personally I feel like is better for just touching up and like blotting the face basically because it's so thin that why am i getting goosebumps if you start sweating it kind of goes away too fast and your skin eats that shit right up i feel like an actual loose powder would be better for setting the face but actually when i went to go buy this they have a version called the nocebo fixing finish powder which is supposed to be it kind of looks similar oh shit but this is meant she, what the lady was saying is that it's meant to actually like set your makeup i'm gonna use this to set my face um i feel like the, the no sebum powder is just too thin and also can be very drying um what i do i like to use two powders sometimes one powder for setting the face lightly and then for those areas where they tend to get really oily like the center of the face the t-zone i'll use something like the no sebum mineral powder and also she uses this brush from oki to set it I just prefer slightly bigger powder brushes because this is good for detail, but I can get lazy. You know, I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use this one. This, this is the one I tend to use. This Picasso 133, this, these are great. It's almost like a brush version of like a powder puff, but without, it doesn't pull too much oil from the skin, like too much moisture, because sometimes when you use a powder puff, those are great for people with oily skin because it like goes like deep into the skin to pull out that like extra oil, excess oil, but it can over dry the skin if your skin is dehydrated or dry. This one is like the perfect medium because it sets the face when you're just doing tapping motions without moving anything around, but it doesn't go, you know, it's more like on the surface of the skin. So it's not like completely pulling all the moisture from your skin. And then just to use this powder, the one that she's using, and to kind of show you what I would do, I will use this one. The other effect of these kinds of powders is that it blurs pores. So it's great for just putting here. This is where I would use that kind of powder on the nostrils, just oily areas, and like right here. The pores tend to be enlarged. And then whatever's left on the eyebrows for later when we fill them in. Just there, anywhere else, and your skin might end up looking too dry. And now she's doing her brows, which, who means eyebrow powder in bright brown? So, don't quote me on this, but I believe the creator of this brand was the person that originated the drunk blush makeup trend that was popular a few years ago and i remember she was on this korean beauty youtubers channel as a guest she was doing her makeup whatever oh my god it was so shady if you look at the comments everyone's talking about it when she went to like do some part of her face she was using her hands to do the makeup and apparently she, her hands smelled like cigarettes which like okay whatever she smokes but the youtuber literally on the side put and it wasn't even like a you know how before subtitles anybody could write the subtitles it wasn't even that it was like literally in the like subtitle in the video he was like oh grand smell like cigarettes i was like what and people in the comments were like what the hell it must have been so bad she had to actually comment i was like this is shady anyway i don't have this brow thing so i'm gonna use a pro 8 chongdam eyebrow kit 
with, again, another Oki brush. This is her brow brush. Not in any particular way, just filling in. I realized that this light can really wash out the eyebrow powder so you don't even really see that I actually drew in my brows. So I need to keep that in mind. And then she's using a brow mascara, this Dolly Wink one, which I don't have. Um, this is just mostly just to match the color of her hair to her eyebrows. And my hair is not the same color, but I will use this brow color that's like this kind of pinky brown, just to kind of even out the color between the powder I just used and, oh my God, this shit's getting all over my skin. And my brow hairs, because my brows are pretty dark compared to the powder. And sometimes you can see the difference between, like you can see where it's filled in and then you can see your actual hair. So the, pa the eyeshadow palette she's using is from the same line as uh, the Espar, <laughs> Espar. I was thinking of that Escobar Samsung phone for some reason. Anyway, this one came out a long time ago. This is the Simply Pink one. And this goes really well with her, to be honest, because her hair is pink. She used these colors for like the base shadow and then like this for the shading. But with my eye shape and the way these colors look on my skin tone, it comes up too white. The color she uses to deepen her eye sockets, I have to use that as my base shade. So I'm going to mix this and this color to get my base shade. looks a little bit better. Last time I did this, I only, I literally used what she was using and it made my eyes look really swollen. Like I just went to the beach and went tanning, but I was wearing sunglasses. So I tanned everywhere except my eyes. It gave me th that vibe. And to be honest, you couldn't really see the color in general. Like on her, it like, because especially because she's pale, it really, it registers as like pink eyeshadow. But for me, it was like, it wasn't looking right. And what she used originally was these two for like shading, but I'm gonna mix these two to get my deepening shade. I'm kind of skipping through the video because I already watched this, but she actually gives some really good tips. She makes it sound like she's not good at, that good at makeup, but she's given us like the real shit. So I recommend, I'll link it down below. I recommend you, you watch the whole thing in detail. Oh, and she's also using um, these brushes from, again, Oki. These are great brushes, but my eyes are a little too big. They're really great for monolids or like eyes with like less space. But for me, like it would just take too long, so. Okay. So what she used is this Pro H Chongdam Stay On Gel Eyeliner. This shit does not come off. It is powerful and pigmented. Again, another brush from that line, this Oki brush line. And to be honest, I feel like, it's probably just me, but when Oksem does it, she can get the thinnest line with this. But for me, I feel like it's just too thick for me. If I want a thin line, I feel like I would use something like, something like this fucking like, this art brush only because I lack control and also with gel liner you have to keep dipping back and forth and it's just really annoying so I'm gonna forgo that and just use this sharp so simple which I've been using in my videos lately so much faster because the thing is that gel liner dries pretty quickly so you have to keep dipping back and forth but I don't think they're even, but it's okay. I'm gonna smudge it out with shadow anyway, which is what she does, so thank God for that. Of course, using this Cullen palette. These palettes have a mirror on here, but this shit is so tiny. You can barely see anything in there. Oh, and also she uses a liquid liner to kind of sharpen the line and kind of like fix it, but I'm gonna skip that. I love the tones of this makeup though. It's been so long since I've done like a warm pink makeup. Back when I had pink hair, I did this all the time, but I love this. She's actually really good at doing her eyeliner. Props to her, man. The fact that she did this herself for her own concert. Girl, queen behavior. Girl, no. Mm -mm. I did the false lashes in the other video. She's not doing it this time. I'm sorry. I apologize. I just can't. But I will say the method that she's doing with the individual lashes, I highly recommend it if you're into false lashes, if you're kind of sparse in the eyelash department, but you don't like the feeling of like strip lashes on your lids. This specific method really is one, supernatural. You can barely, they look like your real lashes if you're using the individual ones and you're kind of placing them underneath here. And two, they don't, you don't feel like you have anything on it, especially when you like blink hard. You don't feel, I've done it before many times and Every time you just don't feel it. Watch this tutorial for that. And also for the mascara, I think I got the wrong one. I think she got the something something perm 
curl fix perm or something. I just got the curl fix in brown, so. Man. Oh wow, this gives no volume, just length. That looks really natural. But I think this would be a good mascara to go with if you would do the individual lashes. I feel like it wouldn't interrupt the kind of pretty featheriness of those individual lashes. I don't know, I feel like there's something charming about just having light fluffy lashes. Again, my monitor's here so I'm kind of looking down so I'll try to look up at the camera every now and then just so you can actually see what I'm actually doing and the, the difference because when I'm looking down into the monitor you can barely see anything going on. Oh, right. She used the duplicate thing. So the, the little sticks, like with the, the lighter, same shit. Um, except I don't want to, I don't feel like dealing with a lighter, so. So she's just adding a little bit more shading on the bottom lid using a small. This brush from that Oki brush line is like a must have. Where the fuck is it? Noon 05. This is like, you don't really see this kind of shape in eyeshadow brushes, but it's perfect for Asian eyelids and you're trying to do the kind of like triangle area here perfect for that put some like right here this really enhances the eye shape oh my god this is so random but i've been getting a lot of like old like rima london and the x factor makeup tutorials on the, that, that band uh little mix they had uh videos with Rimmel London, kind of like little makeup tutorials. The way the makeup artist is speaking to this, she's like, I'm just whack it on, I'm just gonna whack on the lip, lip gloss. Was, like the way she like moves, her, just, ugh. And the makeup looks so bad, but Rimmel is not the problem. It's it's just, I don't know. It was from like eight years ago. So the makeup style was completely different back then. But if you go look it up and watch them, you'll know what I mean. Like lip line and lipstick and then lip gloss. Okay. I also bought this palette, the Ferencos Bear Shadow Palette in Bouquet. And this is an interesting palette. Very, very, very shimmery. And I was a little bit surprised she used this because although they're really shimmery, they're cut, they have pigment to them. So she's putting this pigmented shadow on top of this, but yeah, she just used her hand. But do you see, it's like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like actual pink. I guess but she is kind of just tapping it. So I guess doing that just gets the glit, the shimmer on there more than anything. But there's actual pigments. So it's actually covering the color of the previous shadow, which the way I did it is okay because the base, my base shadow is a little bit darker than this color. So this almost acts like a little bit of a highlight, but I just thought that was interesting. It's something I would use. Normally I would use like a shimmer, just a shimmer, not something that pigmented more like just shimmer. But it's okay because she's about to go into an actual glitter, this Colorgram one that um, Eyes One collabed with Colorgram back in the yesteryear. And so this is what she used in her eggs. Here's the thing. Put it on your hand first because the base is so wet. If you just like go straight in, it will completely erase all the work you did. Dot it. Because if you start rubbing and shit, the applicator is really wet. It's so pretty. I hope you can see that. The applicator is really wet, so it's going to erase the eyeshadow. Like, do you see this? It's straight up like glue. <laughs> a glue. It's like the base. So you kind of have to dip in here, scrape off that glitter, and like pick it up separately. It's, it's weird. Can you see it? And she used a little bit on her lids too, but if I use my finger, it will kind of wet the eyeshadow I already have on and like ruin it. So I'm going to use a brush like this. Something that's kind of loose and not too tightly packed because this will almost act like a sponge for the moisture. Soak up some of that base. When I dab it on my lid, it will leave kind of just the glitter. Time for cheeks. Rome Ann, better than cheek in Blueberry Chip, which is my favorite color from them. It's kind of considered in Korea like the perfect cheek color for cool tone skin tones. She used this as like a point. The Oki brush line has two blush brushes. This one 
it's more for wide application. This one's more point, but she applies the point color first. So I'm actually gonna use this. Oh God, this shit is pigmented. Not pigmented, it's really powdery. She tends to apply it really high up. That's where she's applying, right? Yes. And she uses another blush to kind of blur and blend out the first color. Normally makeup artists will, like from what I've seen, they'll apply the, the wider color first and then use the brighter color, like the pop in the center um, second. But she's kind of doing it the opposite way. So we're just gonna do it her way. I don't have those specific blushes, but I do, I did find one that's kind of similar. This 3CE one in Pure Cake. to kind of blend out the edges. I would have never thought to mix these two colors, but they actually look really cute together. And it creates this almost like this like watercolor effect and it matches the eyeshadow really well. So that's nice. Shading. It doesn't show what she's using. So I'm just using this Petty Petty one. For lips, she uses Shiseido lip balm, which I don't have, but it's okay. But for the main color, She's, or not the main color, the base color. She used the Petty Petta Ink Airy Velvet in number 14, Rosy Pink, which I thought I was gonna hate, but it actually, cause it's so bright. But it's actually really cute. <laughs> Personally, it's really nice and light, but I feel like it's a type of texture that will make your lips look even drier than they normally are. It does have like the blurring effect, but as time passes, it feels like it's gonna dry up my lips because it feels very silicone-y. But then she tops it off with the Roman Juicy Lasting Tint in number 15, Funky Mel, which I really thought I wasn't gonna like because it's so bright. Look at that shit, that's bright. But you know what? I actually don't hate it. That is really pretty. Like I can appreciate a good color, you know what I mean? And it's a lot more saturated than the first color. So like they're very similar tonally, but because the saturation is just higher and it's a little more pigmented, I guess, it helps make the lips pop. And it's not like a gloss. So it's um, just the tint itself that's really glossy. You're not adding an extra layer of gloss, which could be annoying if you're on stage singing, I guess. Oh my, I love one of my favorite, not pastimes, but like, when I'm watching someone performing and have a very strong red lip, I like to see if their microphone, especially these artists these days, have like their white microphones. If you look at like that little end of the microphone to see if there's like red lipstick that's like stained on there. I love, I love it. I think that's it. Finish this up and I will be right back. Did y'all watch the episode of Bunny and Cherry with me and Eddie? This uh, this old beaut right here, this sexy old thing over here, I trusted her. I really did. I thought I was gonna do something. I didn't. I really thought I was gonna kill it. I thought I was gonna. I thought it was gonna be game over for the girls. It was game over for me, bitch. And it was my last life. This kind of looks like her hair in a way. Hers has a little bit more curl to it, and it's a, obviously a different color. But I do not look good. Oh my god, I need a wig cap. Jesus Christ. I feel like this is the part of the video where I'm gonna completely regret doing this. Because we can just leave it at the makeup, to be honest. It's all about just the makeup. But I want the full fantasy. Even though I know it's not gonna give. My head is. Look at. <laughs> People used to call me egghead in elementary school. And I was like, what the f do you mean, egghead? I think I know why now. <laughs> what the f am I doing? <laughs> She's really not giving. What did I do to deserve this? Should I just like do give like a 60s moment and just like pin all the hair, the bangs to one side? Very like, very this, like this kind of moment.
I mean, don't hate on the player, hate on the game. Oh my god, okay, hold on, I'm gonna hang up and then call me again. Let me go downstairs. And then I'm gonna have mom answer the phone. <laughs> I look like Victoria. Holy shit. You don't look like Tori. It's weird because you look like dad. Oh, <laughs> That's what I said. I look like my dad. <laughs> anyway, I'm filming a video. Can I put you guys in the video? Right now? Yeah, I'm recording. Say hi. A nun? What the f***? He's a really- What? He's a really hot nun. I know, like, what about this says nun? Maybe like in a really bad porn. <laughs> True. Nun's gone wild. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Show dad. Whoa. <laughs> he wants this, don't lie. Go to make a state? What the heck? <laughs> okay.